this is my rookie garden and I'm going to tell you what I did right and what I did wrong because I want you to plant a garden too. Now I got online and I researched the best way to make raised flower beds or actually garden beds, whatever. Um, because we have gophers out here. You can see that there's a few holes there and uh, I figured they would eat them. So I got on Pinterest and I found a gal that had made raised beds out of dog-eared um, fence post, fence boards, and that's what I did at Home Depot. These are actually the cheapest boards you can get. I think each one of these beds cost me maybe $12 to do. Um, that's for the wood. Now the soil, we'll talk about that in a minute. I bought, there's one, two, three, four long boards on the side that I did not cut, and then I used one board on each end that I cut in half. I cut it exactly in half, which is three feet. Then I nailed them to these posts here. Those are boards from a pallet that I took apart. So I nailed them to those first, did both ends, and then stood them up and nailed the sides to that board. And then I made a middle board right there as a brace to brace it together. And I did four of them first. And then I had some boards that I had out by our barn and put this bed together. I just used, I ended up cutting a little bit and put them together and that's a perfect bed for something like my cabbage. It's the right size, you're able to space it out. Use what you have, but I put those together the same way I did my other, other boards, other beds. Excuse my allergies here this morning, I just got back from a hike. Um, this bed here, I used um, half that. I cut them all in half. One, two, three, four boards here. I cut them in half. Then I used some pieces of wood that I had for a brace. They're not quite as tall, but it worked. That one needs to be hammered back in. And I didn't need to put a middle brace in there because it's small enough. And this is my zucchini bed. Really, I should have probably just... I may do four zucchini next year in this bed, one in each corner, because they do spread out quite a bit. Kill those moths like that because they lay eggs. For every flower that you get, you get a zucchini once, once they are done flowering in a day. And there's a zucchini right there. It's just about ready to pick. But they grow pretty fast if you give them enough water. Now this bed here, this was a feed barrel my dad had on the barn. And I had some potatoes that I let go um, grow, kept, kept growing and getting roots. You know how you get old potatoes, get roots on them? Take those potatoes, cut them up. For every eye that you have on the potato, you can plant that. I have 12 plants here. And it's getting at the end of the season, so they're starting to wither down. But I keep watering them, hoping, you know, to give it as much time as I can to grow. So you'll get, the roots will grow down and then they grow potatoes on the roots. Then I have a lavender bush right in the middle, just for decoration. So this here is a pear tree. Don't get a whole, whole lot of pears. There's maybe eight of them on here, but I'm watering them every day. We get a lot of late frost around here, which kills off the flower buds, unfortunately. Now, as I talked about, this is my cabbage bed. Cabbage I planted green, purple, green, purple, green, purple. And I started all of these at the same time, and I've already harvested two cabbages off it and look at they're growing back the leaves are growing back if there was enough if I had year-round growing season you can see those little cabbage heads growing back on there if I had year-round growing season they would actually come back the cabbage actually is frost tolerant unless you get super you know a lot of below freezing temps but um, the mystery to me is what the heck is that moving look at these ants this was a plum. What is that? That's moving. That's so plump. It's so cool. This was a plum that I threw in here for the birds to eat. And it's moving. Holy crap, there's like beetles on it. I'm going to pick them up and put them out. Those are bizarre. Whoa. I have never seen anything like that. That's so weird. I think they're beetles. They've got to be. You know, there's like a whole bunch of them. Wow, that's bizarre. Well, they're not in my garden now. Anyways, uh, I planted all these at the same time. And 
the purple are just not getting very big. I might get a cabbage out of this one, but this one is about almost ready to pick. It's so weird, but anyways, I'm sure there's a reason for it. Okay, and I planted a pumpkin plant and um, cantaloupe. These are cantaloupe out here. These are cantaloupe. And they're just barely starting to take off, little flowers, which means I might get a cantaloupe, but it's going to freeze pretty soon. And this right here was a sugar baby pumpkin, and I only got one pumpkin out of it. I don't know why I'm not getting very many, didn't get very many pumpkins out of it. And then this A-frame here was an old swing set that I thought, I'm going to try some hanging tomatoes. Well, I didn't know that tomato plants cannot get wet unless it rains on them, but any kind of groundwater out of the hose or whatever um, will burn the plant. So right away, I had taken and drilled holes in the bottom of these buckets and hung them upside down and started watering them, and they all just kind of burned up. So I took them down, and I just kind of threw this bed together. I put some boards around it to try and hold the soil in, and my dog keeps digging it up. But they're starting to come back. They're They're... They've got new growth on them here, and they do have little little plants. These are aroma tomatoes right there. So, but my brother has a greenhouse, and those are little tomatoes there. And I went and bought this one, and it's finally starting to get flowers on it. I might get a few tomatoes out of it, but my brother has a greenhouse, and he said his plants are close to five feet tall, and he has a ton of tomatoes on them. So, to do or not, not to do, I won't do that anymore. Now this bed here is hodgepodge. It's got green peppers. This here is actually an okra plant. Um, it was only one of many that I planted that only survived. This is a sage plant and a jalapeno. I've already picked five or six of them off of here. There's another one here. And then that one is a sereno pepper. Now I had come out here one day and it was just bare branches no leaves on them at all and that I found a big old huge hornworm on them and a bunch of hornworms on my tomatoes too and I had to pluck all those babies off and kill them these are my bell pepper plants ooh I gotta pick that one it's it's getting ripe I just twist them off try to anyways well oh. need to get my scissors and cut it does not want to let go. Let me get my scissors. Oh, we don't have them out here. All right. Uh, and there's more bell peppers on here. These are red bell peppers. I already picked off quite a few. That one's starting to turn red. And that one's getting a new pepper on it. This here is a banana pepper. That's about ready to pick two. That right there is a squash. And it, it's pretty much taken over this flower bed. And then I planted... Um, chives, which didn't do anything, but I'm going to leave them. And then these here are garlic. Oh, this is all buds from a garlic plant, and they are actually, the plant's weathering away, but there actually is garlic there. I pulled up one of them. This is my cauliflower, which is doing okay. It's ready to pick. And this right here was my broccoli, which all bolted. Bolted means it went to seed. And that's usually from being too hot. Same with my spinach here and my cilantro. I'm so bummed I didn't get any cilantro out of it. It just bolted right away. Now, I'm not sure why, but my guess is my soil. I put garden soil from Home Depot in it, coconut core, and I got some dirt from my brother's house. He had a big pile of dirt. And I also took some horse manure. It was dried. But um, I think it was too hot for the flower bed. Plus the heat here killed it off. So then I have little cherry tomatoes in here. And I have stevia. This is stevia. Super sweet plant. Tastes like be good to sweeten your iced tea with. Chamomile. Green beans. This is a uh, lemon verbena that tastes like lemon. And I have carrots here. I'm really excited about these. Let me see if I can find one that I can... I need to thin them out anyways. See, got a little bitty carrot there. This is kale. And oh my god, my dog is in here digging. I'm going to kill her. No, I won't. But I had tried checking out some of my... Uh... Oh, dog. 
I had uh, picked one of these yesterday. I was going to juice it. These are beets, and I was going to juice one yesterday. And I found two little beets, but they're not getting very big either. There's a few of them, like that one. You can see that one. Another one over here that's a few got a big roots, but they're not growing very fast either. And this was definitely too crowded. It is savoy cabbage, and there's they go ahead of cabbage in there, but I should have spaced them out. My radishes bolted right away. They just went to seed. You can see these seed pods here. I'm letting them go to seed without chopping them down. I'm going to gather all those seeds up and save them from next year because all of these seeds are heirloom, which means they are not genetically modified, which you don't want. So when you do a bed like this, next year I'm only going to do like two items per bed or hopefully my kale would be bigger. I don't know. Maybe if it's like a fish tank, if you keep your, your fish in a small tank, they're not going to grow. And maybe that's the same thing with a garden bed. So next year I will do only a couple items per bed. And I had picked up, printed out a companion planting chart off Pinterest and went off that. That's why I planted them like this. But there's just too much, too crowded. I would definitely will space them out differently next year. This bed here is all lettuce, which is also bolting. It's getting too hot. This is more of a cool weather plant. The thing that's not bolting is my romaine lettuce, which is doing pretty good. Well, some of it did bolt here, my romaine. And I got Swiss chard. The grasshoppers are eating some of it, but it's still good. I've been juicing it every day. And my red leaf lettuce was the first thing to bolt. It's going to seed here. And then this is my corn, my non-GMO corn, which is really important to uh, get non-GMO because it's really hard to find. You don't want genetically modified food because that's um, really bad for you. But these little butterflies here, you want to try and kill them off, get rid of them if you can, because they lay eggs in your, your silks. See this is a piece of corn. They're not very big. I need to, what I did wrong is I needed to plant my corn in a ditch. Well, I made two rows and what I should have made deeper ditches, but the, the soil was really hard even after I tilled it. The soil was really hard and I should have spaced them out further. But you need to have a ditch where the water is going to puddle to plant your seeds in so that you gather up all of your, they get as much water as possible. Now plant corn, I saw this on a documentary, corn is really cool. Whenever it rains, the water goes from, trickles down just like a little fountain and it goes right down to the bottom of that root, of the root there. And then I have a bunch of sunflower seeds, sunflowers. They are ready to seed, I mean they've already gone to seed, but they're drying out. I've already got the biggest one covered already. But uh, yeah, this is my garden. So next year when I plant, I'm going to make more beds like this. I'm going to try and fill up this whole area here, make more beds, and I will only plant um, two or three items in the whole bed, and I may plant them vertically. Let me show you this too here. This is a rain gutter, and I filled it with strawberries. And I got some strawberries out of it. They're all, everything is all organic, but... Uh, I don't know, maybe it's not getting enough water. Or maybe they take longer than one year to, if they'll come back. But those are the do's and don'ts. But I definitely advise you to plant a garden. Get online and find some organic non-GMO seeds. There's a lot of them online, even on Etsy. And plant your favorite foods. If there's stuff that you're not going to eat, don't plant it. Just plant the favorite things that you like. And make sure to eat a rainbow of color of vegetables, fruits and vegetables every day. Those rainbow of colors means that they have different vitamins and nutrients in them, which we definitely need. So, okay. Have a good day. Plant something. Grow a garden. Bye.